A politician behaving badly, a plan for regional transit, summer sessions for the state Senate, and big bills are finally coming due. Stay put. My week starts right now. Recently, Michigan's economy has begun to turn around. Michigan's gained over 250,000 new jobs. We've paid off $20 billion in long-term debt. And our population is increasing for the first time in a decade. But to make Michigan a top 10 state, there's still plenty of work to be done. Step up and help put Michigan on top. Learn what you can do at michigan-turnaround-plan.com. Funding is also provided by Delta. Good evening, and thanks so much for joining us for My Week. I'm Christy McDonald. When we elect people to public office, we expect them to uphold the law, which explains the firestorm around State Senator Virgil Smith this week that everyone is talking about. He, he's accused of shooting at his ex-wife's car, and he's facing multiple charges, including domestic violence. So coming up on My Week, the charges against Smith and a look at the options offered by the state constitution to remove a legislator from office. Also coming up, the Regional Transit Authority gets closer to coming up with a master plan and it's something we may all have to pay for. What regional transportation should look like in southeast Michigan is just ahead. Plus, the state Senate can forget a summer break. There's just too much to do. We will take a look at what's on the agenda, including a new plan to fix the roads. And bills, they're coming due in Detroit. Water customers should face some shutoffs, and a group of homeowners are facing tax bills. Is enough being done to help people out? That is all coming up for you on my week. But we do start in Detroit, where felony charges have been filed against State Senator Virgil Smith, Jr. He is out on bond after shooting a shooting involving his ex-wife early Sunday morning. According to police, Smith got into an altercation with his ex-wife when she went to his Detroit home and found him with another woman. Meanwhile, the senator has been removed from committees and relieved of his caucus duties in the legislature. But the question now is whether Smith's alleged behavior constitutes removal from his job. And that is where we begin our discussion with our My Week contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. I'm having a tough time um, talking today, but I, I promise it's going to get a little bit better. All right, so guys, when I opened up the paper, and I saw this happen, I went, are you kidding me? And reportedly, <laughs> Smith said to police, this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. Nolan? Well, there's no trouble like woman trouble, is there? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no one knows about that. <laughs> well, yeah, so. but it doesn't constitute, I mean, again, there's, there's a lot wrong with this, but I'm going to let you continue your statement. Well, I'm not sure I should, I mean, but go ahead. You know, he obviously went off his nut, and, uh, you know, he <laughs> ended up with uh, two women in the house at once, and that's a, a recipe for trouble, and you know, uh, this guy who has voted against every gun rights bill in the legislature since he's been in there turns out to have a rifle he's in his closet and him. started shooting it off. It was the stupidest thing, probably. If he's done anything stupider than that, um, <laughs> it'd be interesting to hear about. Now, as is all allegedly, he's just been yeah. charged. He hasn't been convicted. But, Stephen, when you see this, this is another instance of politicians behaving badly. Yeah, well, here, spectacularly badly. <laughs> Uh, um, you know, I mean, and, and it, it, there isn't a lot of humor to be found in this in the situation, frankly. Uh, this well, is, come on, Steve. We had a naked senator a, shooting off a gun in the middle of the. This is a that's domestic, funny. but this is a domestic violence uh, yes. kind of situation that's very, very serious. Uh, we have a big problem with that in this state, uh, generally, with the the laws being applied in a way that protects. Uh, women uh, from men who would who would do them harm, and here you've got a, an elected official, uh, you know, allegedly and sort of admitting that uh, that he punched, you know, his ex-wife, and then went out in the street shooting down uh, after her car. I mean, it, it, there's no question that that Kim Worthy has got to make, uh, I think, a real statement here. Uh, she's got to prosecute this very meticulously and make sure that that whatever punishment the law allows for this, if he's convicted, uh, is is handed out. All right. So violence against women, also gun violence, and, and again, just shooting down the street. Ten shots is what police are reporting that that that, that happened. Nolan, and you alluded to his record in in the Senate on gun rights. Well, yeah. I mean, he voted against the Castle Doctrine, which um, greatly expanded the, your right to use deadly force to protect your home and property. And apparently, he's going to invoke the Castle Doctrine in his defense, which is a, a bit hypocritical. I mean, everything about this 
this um, situation is a hypocrite, but we know Virgil Smith's kind of a hothead. A, um, a very hothead, and I think uh, other people in the legislature will tell you about what kind of hothead he, he is. I've heard stories over the years about him rushing into other people's offices, yelling and screaming. Uh, you know, he is somebody who's very <laughs> volatile. All right, well, we, we had a little bit of a run-in. We, we were, <laughs> you've had a run we in were first hand witnesses to, uh, All right, to Virgil so at some point. If you've had this experience with him, <laughs> you should, should You don't want to meet Virgil known. late night in a bar when he's had to. Evidently many. not. <laughs> okay, should voters have known? All right, we have to look also at, at a record, but yeah. should you hold a guy's record against him. 2,000 minor in possession, 2004 operating vehicle while impaired. His license was revoked but given yeah. back to him in, in You in know, the, one of the tragedies here is that uh, in the last election, voters had a choice between Virgil Smith and Rashida Tlaib, who is one of the model legislators, uh, certainly out of out of Detroit and, and for the whole state. And they, they rejected Tlaib uh, very soundly for Virgil, who you know, who, let's be honest, is the beneficiary of a, of a strong political name in the city. Uh, and you look at sort of his record of behavior, he, he, is, he has been a more decent legislator uh, than I think a lot of people expected was going to be possible. But, but his personal behavior goes back years in terms of misbehaving, and uh, uh, voters were, were willing to overlook that. Uh, when they had a better choice, uh, and that's, I think that's one of the real shames of, of, of the situation, too. All right, so he cannot be removed unless there is a two-thirds majority in the state Senate. Um, right now, a spokesperson for the Senate Majority Leader says Smith should give serious consideration as to whether he can serve his constituents right now. Nolan, should he be stepping down from his position? Well, of course, but I think that's, in this situation, you'll often see the office becomes a bargaining chip for um, for the, a plea agreement and a lighter sentence. It's something he can give up um, as part of his punishment and perhaps avoid some jail time or prison time or at least cut that back. I would be surprised if he steps down before he gets that opportunity. Um, just It was similar in the Kwame Kilpatrick case until it, it just became overwhelming. He was, he was using that office sort of as part of... Um, his leverage, but but here I'm not sure that's a, appropriate. This is not a. I'm saying it's appropriate. Uh, yeah, I'm saying that's like. And, and I and I would be surprised if Kim Morley would go for that. This is not a, a white collar crime uh, or or malfeasance of office. This is a violent crime uh, involving domestic violence and involving a weapon that that you know he's discharging out in the street yeah, at but, one in the morning. But Anybody no prior, could have been killed by but, what he did. But no prior, of course. But no prior record. Um, I, you know, I think this is, if, if he weren't a state senator, this would be a case that would get pled down, get bargained for. In and Wayne I'm not County. sure he should, in Wayne County, but I'm not sure he should be treated all that much differently and one, than everybody one else. question I have also is uh, whether this will be tried in Wayne County because his dad used to be the chief judge. He That's has relationships with yeah. all of the judges on the bench. Uh, is there any judge in Wayne County who could hear this and not feel like there was some sort of conflict? And if it gets removed to someplace like Oakland or Macomb, he's cooked uh, because this kind of thing is met so with much very more. very few cases get tried in Wayne County. I mean, this will be the horse trading will start, the bargaining will, will start. That's and uh, giving us no prior record and the fact that, you know, losing your Senate seat is pretty stiff punishment uh, to begin with. I would expect there'll be some plea involving that and community service and this will go away. Well, I don't think it's that stiff a punishment. Again, he's, he's, he's been charged. It's a violent crime. It's a, it's a very violent, violent crime. Super violent that's crime. that's, that's only the tip of the iceberg for him. Let me ask this before we, before we end this topic. Um, the Senate only has basically removal power. There's no, there's nothing, there's nothing in between here, Stephen. Should there be something that if you are accused of, of felony or that you have to take a 30-day step back period, I mean, should anything be changed or is it, is it fine the way it is in, in terms of, of, of if a legislator does something like this or is accused of something like this, it's either an all or nothing? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think you should have to, to, to do anything if you're accused of a crime. I mean, that, that shouldn't forfeit your seat. At the same time, I think you ought to have the decency to say, I'm going to get out of the way here uh, and, let, and deal with this personal problem or whatever you want to call it away from the spectacle of the uh, public glare and at a time when it will distract you from your, from your duties representing uh, the people. I think that's a, an expectation we ought to have of all public 
officials, not so much a law we ought to have to pass to, to, to sort of force them to do. Last word on this, Nolan. And again, I, I would not expect to see him sitting back on the job in the Senate ever again. I think, um, I think you know, it's, unlikely, it's, yeah. it's very unlikely. So <clears throat> I think it's just a matter of playing this out. All right, now we move to southeast Michigan where the planning process for a long-awaited regional transportation system is moving into high gear. Officials from the Regional Transit Authority will start working on a master plan next week. They're going to be holding meetings in Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, and Washtenaw counties. And the RTA wants to hear from residents on what they're looking for in a transit system linking the four counties. And I think this is really interesting because I don't think you can have a conversation about where our transit should be going when you haven't first had the conversation here with us of why we don't have mass <laughs> transit here in Detroit, why we're one of... Well, we do. They're called freeways. <laughs> well, why so, we don't so have... Masses of people move on them every so day. So one of the great ironies <laughs> in, in Detroit, and I, I wish I had uh, stopped and gotten out and taken a picture, but the other day I was driving down Woodward where they are digging up the whole street, uh, you know, to, to put in the light rail, which is rail. Our, our, first, uh, our first new you know, public transit system in what, 20, 25 years uh, in, this, what miles? in the city. And it's only going, you know, three, I think it's three and a half it's miles up to, ride. but uh, right out in, uh, in, in Midtown where they're digging up in the middle of the street where they're going to go, that what they're finding are what? Rails. <laughs> Underneath the pavement, the, the, the rails from the old streetcar are still there. So right. they're pulling up uh, infrastructure that we once upon a time built and had uh, and got people around really well in order to, to, to put a new one in. I think that says everything about the transit story here in Southeast Michigan. I mean, we, we just have never uh, gotten to the point where, where, um, where we should be with this. Uh, and we're now sort of back to the future, going back to the beginning uh, because we dismantled something. Well, and I think it, I think it was it was more than just, you had a dysfunctional streetcar system, and I think it was more than just um, the fact that we were the home of the big three and everyone was in an automobile. You had urban sprawl, but you had also a lot of infighting in, in terms of there was no sort of regional cooperation well, at that not, time to make sure. There has never been, been. And I'm not sure there is now. I mean. <clears throat> The truth is, this is the closest thing we're going to get to mass transit. It's, we're not going to get rail. We're not going to, widespread rail. We're not going to get subways. We're going to get these rapid buses, and they could work if the people, if from if the, the RTA, will get that. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to get here, and we're going to build off that. <clears throat> and again, they could work to move a lot of people around if if they, you get a good plan and if if it's approved and the planning process just starting. Now they should be looking at what happened last week with Prop One and saying, what does that sort of foretell here for our efforts in 2016 to go out and get a tax, tax hike? If they just simply go out there and say, we got this great bus plan, we want you to give us two mills to support it, I think it's going to fail because people in, in the suburbs, in, in Macomb, Oakland, and suburban Wayne County, already paying a full mill tax for bus service that they don't use and doesn't, don't, doesn't often work well. I think between now and 2016, they have to combine this RTA with SMART and ask people for one tax. Uh, I don't think, you know, you, you saw the aversion to a tax increase when people are confused. I don't think people are going to raise the tax for this bus system unless they feel there's some efficiency and we're getting it right. And, you know, this, so when it was proposed, it was sort of a patch over. And the enabling legislation gives them the ability to acquire SMART, and that's exactly what they should do. So really, are the two big questions, Stephen, what do we need and how much is it going to cost? I, th I think so. I think that's where you start, for sure. And, and the RTA has been uh, efforting, you know, an answer to those questions pretty, pretty aggressively. I mean, they've got really great uh, uh, materials now that explain what it is they want to do. Uh, they've talked to, to hundreds, uh, maybe thousands of people in the, in the region about what they want and how they think it should work. Uh, they're gearing up to make, I think, a pretty strong case for, for, for what they want to do. And it's just going to be three... Uh, uh, sort of trunk lines, you know, Gratiot, uh, uh, Woodward, Woodward, and, and Michigan, Michigan. Um, uh, and they'll put the buses out there. But but I think you're right. You've got to do it so that it it combines that yeah. with that smart one coverage and one way to pay for for all. You of You know, it. and I think you also have to get people to understand what the RTA is. I mean, it was formed in in 2012, and we're now only starting to see a lot of the wheels turning. And the yeah. fact that it wasn't 
fully funded so it could, wasn't funded so it could at get all, going. Really. I mean, it, it, the funding that the legislature provided was not ever going to provide actual transit. Uh, it was just going to provide for the administrative cost yeah. of, of the I mean, RTA. So. But, you know, it's already up and running in Grand Rapids. The legislation yep. was approved the same time, yep. and we are nowhere near... Why? Um, up at, well, why, because, why? Why do they get because, it done in Grand Rapids? Because, I know geographically because they work they're a together. smaller space. Well, they work together. They've got they've got fewer um, union issues to work around. They've got this fewer have, turf wars out right, there. Less less history uh, mm -hmm. of failure. Less history of acrimony uh, among the, the the different players. I mean, we're we're not in the same category. In those in those regards as, as Grand Rapids and that's why they they're on the buses now and, and we're still yeah, talking about so it. then so then how do we ever get over that how does this region yeah. ever get over that and we have so many of these conversations I about think, regional cooperation yeah. and we're really going to get it to work this time so I think you, I think you can't get over it so much as you just got to go around it I mean I think if the RTA can you know wins everybody wants to be part of wins if you can put something together that actually works one of the things they want to do start doing before uh, the vote or, or before they're funded is this uh, uh, shuttle between Metro Airport and, and downtown. Which a good and idea. That would places. be huge. But you know. And that, if you get that going and people see it and they think it works, then it's a little easier to talk about doing more. But people are not going to get on buses unless you give them a darn good reason to get on buses. They're not going to say, wow, it'll be fun to ride that bus to work today. <laughs> but parking is getting very scarce downtown yeah, and is. very expensive. Yep. And particularly the north south routes from downtown to Oakland County getting extraordinarily jammed. Soaked, so, yeah. I mean, people will take the bus if it's made more if convenient. And you don't, it doesn't take all day to go from yeah. place to place as it does now. So, but if you put people on buses but, to, to, to the airport, right? If you could take a bus to the airport sure. instead of hassling with the parking out there, which is really expensive, right. or taking a metro car, which is expensive, uh, again, I think that's a good place to start. And Ann Arbor runs 13 buses in. a day from Ann Arbor to, to the, the airport, airport, and yeah. they're used, they're full, it's Students a reasonable cost, and it works. And, and also, if you're talking about visitors and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, people coming in to but, visit the city, but this is the being able to get down there. Yeah. This is the first time in our memory, at least, that there's been a cr critical mass of commuters downtown yeah. to make it work. There used to be a train from Ann Arbor to Detroit, and mm -hmm. it wasn't pulled just arbitrarily because we don't like mass transit. It was pulled or, or, or stopped because the ridership didn't support it. Yeah. I think today's a different day now. All right. Well, meantime, back to the state legislature. It looks like mm -hmm. lawmakers won't be out for the summer, at least not for the entire summer. State senators agree there is just too much to do, and they need the extra sessions to work on pressing issues like road funding. It is not clear yet whether the House will follow suit. However, House Republicans have already come up with a new proposal to fix the state's roads. You know, Nolan, the Senate must have heard you last week when you were railing about the fact if they can't get this done this summer, then they should be a part-time legislature. Yeah. We should take away their jobs. Well, and, you know, I think you, you have to commend the Senate for stepping up um, and saying, uh, we're going to stay until we get the job done. That was the good thing that happened in the legislature this week. Their first crack at a plan is, in the house. is an absolute disaster. It's fantasy land. Well, that's All right, can I, can, I list, can I list that's some the of the things from the but house? The Senate, you, you notice you don't have a plan yet from either the Senate or the governor. No. And the governor should have started this conversation with you a plan. You should have put legislation out. Yes. You should have had legislation should ready to now. go after the you know, vote. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details of the House plan, and this is just some of the details. So they think it's gonna, they're going to get about a billion dollars a year, but it's from a bunch of different places. So here we go, $350 million in, in, in new general fund money, projected economic revenue. So yeah. kind of just w w Hope wishing and money. hoping. You know, here, uh, I, I think when, actually that was almost $700 million, wasn't yeah, it? No yeah, it was money. closer to seven. When Detroit City Council used to do this all the time and, and the mayor's office with their budget, people lost their minds uh, and called it irresponsible governing. Now you've got the Speaker of the House saying, let's have the whole state uh, budget according to money that we don't already have. Shockingly irresponsible. Um, if that, I don't know how you go out on road projects that sometimes takes two and three Three, three years. I don't know how you contract out road projects on anticipated well, revenue. What they, what you don't do, have the cash in hand. The thing that they'll do, which is what they always do, 
You, you, you say you're going to do it, and when you come up short, you raid the school aid fund yeah. in order to pay for it. All right, I let's mean, see what else they're just, talking about. They also want to eliminate the earned income tax credit to the tune of $117 million. I, I, you know, poor people, they don't need that. Uh, which is, this is going to be very poor. controversial. The working poor, and that's the, that's the key. That's for people who get up every day, go to work, and still don't make enough to make ends meet. We've already hit them hard with uh, reducing the credit. Now you've got the Speaker of the House saying they don't get it at all. It's un unbelievable. They also want to take uh, $75 million from tobacco settlement from the 20 First Century Jobs Fund, $60 million well, from tribal just, gaming compact they're already revenue. Spending and they that have money to change in dozens the of there. other places. I Every mean, time they say, let's use the tobacco you money. You know, this it. tobacco money was the worst dang thing that ever happened to this state because, you know, all of a sudden it, it, it became like monopoly money, play money. We're going to spend <laughs> it everywhere. How many times over the years have people tried to solve this state's problems on that tobacco summer? They've, they've, um, uh, leveraged it two or three times in terms of bonding off. I mean, of it. I'm not even sure that money what, exists. What you see when you look at this, and yeah. this is, I, I don't want to attack. It's my cheat sheet's my notes. I don't yeah. want to attack uh, Kevin Cotter personally, but but the immaturity that's reflected in this plan is stunning. I mean, this is somebody who doesn't understand legislating, who doesn't understand budgeting, and and that's not his fault. Uh, he's the Speaker of the House only by virtue of the fact that it's, he's he's this, he's the the, the most senior person there. Is an indictment of term, term, term limits. limits. I was just I mean, going to say, we're talking is, about term limits This here, is Mickey we? Mouse legislating that you would not see in other states. And, and we have got to get to a place where we are electing people and letting them have the time to learn how things work so you don't get this kind and of... And some wait, courage, too, not always looking up, right. oh, gosh, if I do this in four years, I can't run from the, for the Senate. I mean, you've got very little now independence among these lawmakers yeah. because they sell themselves out for their next job. They're all leapfrogging along. Term limits did not create a citizen's legislature. It created a pogo stick legislature where everybody's <laughs> bouncing from job to job. That visual is awesome. Um, I just want to also throw in that they were talking about taking the $50 million from film incentives and shoving it there too. So Okay, fine. Oh, you know, they're going to take that. That's fine. And there's some, not all of these ideas are bad ideas. There are, but it's not, they a are not going to be able right. to. The truth is, the reality is, because they, they, they made the idiotic decision to go to voters with Prop 1, and that was trounced 4 to 1 by 4 to 1 margin. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect the lawmakers to go back and do this 100% with new taxes. That's unrealistic. So you've got to get, find some places you know, that are less essential than road work and take that money and add to the pile. But the, if we're going to fix these roads, the biggest pool is going to have to be an increase in the fuel taxes. And some tax. Sure. All right, so but you call this a pogo stick legislature, and you say that this is just the product of, of basically immature immature politicians. But would you give the House and, and the Speaker credit for at least coming up with something no. a week after Prop 1 this saying, was, hey, this, this was is a plan. starting point. This, pl this, this plan was out there. This is Colbeck's plan right. that got thrown out in the last legislature. Well, and it's also, it's also just sort of grab bag funding. There's no vision. There's no cohesive vision here for governing. Well, there's no uh, reality. Uh, right. I, I mean, the idea that you can sort of just take from these things without without consequence, which is sort of what he's saying, uh, is absurd. These All of those things have serious consequences Spineless. And, and when the when the money doesn't materialize from some of them they will have even more dire consequences when you go to the school aid fund which is their their funny pot uh, of money up there and, and take it out uh, you you got to sort of have legislators who are but, thinking more long listen, term not that's not this. to say you can't look at other areas of the state sure. budget and gain efficiencies Absolutely you can, even but the that's school not, aid fund not nothing that. should be untouchable but that's not what they're doing if they said hey look we're going to take a hard look at all of our spending and we're going to find a half a, a billion dollars that are not being being spent well but that's they're not what they're doing it, here no. this is fake money they're trying to print well and, and i was very surprised at the earned income tax credit the fact yeah that i mean it's totally it, the, the the moral irresponsibility responsibility that's attached to that is, uh, again, just stunning. Of course, you're not going to need that when the Democrats push through $15 an hour minimum wage, <laughs> well, right? You need it both. You need both. <laughs> that's a conversation for another day, right? Hey, finally tonight, real quick, uh, property owners in Wayne County who are behind on their taxes are getting more time to make payment arrangements. And for the second time, the county treasurer, they've extended the deadline to reach a deal and avoid foreclosures. That date is now June 8th. And meanwhile, the Detroit Water Department, they've sent out notices warning delinquent customers they have 10 days to get on a payment plan or risk possible shutoffs. So have we done enough to help people um, before the second round, uh, this, you know, another, another round of shutoffs? Have we done enough to help Water shutoffs? Water shutoffs. Yeah, I think, you know, the, you can't make the case any longer that, that people don't know this is coming. I think they've taken a few months here to try to figure out not only how to notify people, but how to help the truly 
indigent. And, you know, we had a system before where everybody was exploiting the city, the, the water department's Businesses ineptitude, too. businesses and residents. And I think at some point, people, we, you got to collect what's owed. You have to collect what's owed. And, and a lot of people have gotten on these payment plans and looking at the tax foreclosures as well. But I think the problem is, and we've talked about this, is can people continue to stay on these payment plans? Even the, the yeah. water department I mean, has said, hey, 30 percent of the people have already fallen off the payment right. plans that we arranged right. for them. And uh, what, you're, what you're bumping up against here is, is the problem of poverty. There are people in the city, not an insignificant number, who cannot afford uh, the, the, these bills. And we have got to get to a place where we're dealing with that as opposed to saying, we'll shut their water off, which of course has all kinds of health implications and other things. If you had a family uh, living in a, in a structure without water, again, the moral responsibility there is huge, but also the public uh, health and safety issues are huge. We've got to confront this for, in a different way and start thinking differently about uh, how we provide services like water. Well, you right, also well, have to create a... Ten seconds, Nolan. I mean, you, have to, you also, you, it's essential. You create the recognition that you've got to pay or it's going to get turned Someone out. Someone has to pay. There's you no can't put, make paying your water bill the least priority of the month. All right, and we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks, guys. That's going to do it for my week. We're glad that you joined us. We want to hear what you think about the show. Tell us what you'd like to see or any topics on your mind. We'd love to hear from you. So find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter. Tell us what you think. Plus, head to myweek.org because right now, Nolan, Stephen, and I, we're going to continue the conversation. A little something extra that you won't see on TV. I'm Christy McDonald. Have a great night. We will see you next time for My Week. Take care.